All right, good morning, biologists. Here is the screencast um, regarding multiple alleles. Um, multiple alleles basically is another way of saying blood types. Um, multiple alleles is actually an example of codominance and having more than two alleles that can possibly um, determine your phenotype and genotypes, okay? So let's just go through these, um, the bullet points here. Genes with three or more alleles, like I said, are multiple alleles. Uh, there ends up being four different blood types in humans. Uh, we're probably, well, you're probably well aware of this. You can be blood type A, you can be AB, you can be B, and you can be O. And I'll get to those in just a second. Uh, there's no antigen present in the O blood type, and I'll get to what these little eyes mean in a second. Uh, AB refers to two antigens on the surface of the blood cells. So if O has zero, if AB has two, we can uh, kind of assume that B is going to have one antigen and A is going to have one antigen. Um, a and B, this is where the example of codominance comes in. Those are dominant together. So if we look at this chart, this is an awesome chart. It has really everything you need to know. So for our phenotypes, for a blood type A, this is what the actual red blood cell looks like. It has a surface marker, an antigen A on its surface, okay? That means that it has two potential genotypes. Now, the way we write these letters, we don't just say A, B. We use the capital letter I, and if you have a capital letter I, you can either be homozygous dominant by having two big A's, or... Good morning, Rosemont High School. Sorry about that. I got interrupted by the announcements. But anyways, um, what I was saying was if you are A, this is one of the possible genotypes. The other possible genotype, if you are heterozygous, is going to be a big A and then a recessive. And we write that recessive using a little i, a small case i. We don't use a little a, okay? So right here it says genotypes for A. If you're homozygous dominant, you're big I A, big I A, or you could be heterozygous. All right, for B, it's basically the same thing, except for the antigen on the surface, obviously, is the antigen for B. But the genotypes are the same, substituting Bs for As. So two possibilities, homozygous dominant, which would be capital letter IB, capital letter IB, or if you're heterozygous, capital IB, little i. And then for phenotypes, uh, continuing on our list, AB, AB blood type people have both antigens represented on the surface. There's only one genotype for AB. It is capital IA, capital IB. Okay, that's the only one. And if we look at O, O we already said over here there's no antigen present at all in O. So the genotype has to be recessive. So that is little i, little i. All right? So I'm going to move on to the next slides, and I'm going to do a couple examples um, of these. And what you should keep in mind when you're doing problems is you always want to go with the genotypes that you for sure know. Just like when we did some of the monohybrid crosses or a test cross, the only genotype that we for sure knew was the recessive. In this case, there's two genotypes that we for sure know, A, B, and O. There's no two possibilities. It's just if you're AB, that's your genotype. If you're O, that's your genotype. All right, so let's just start by looking at the first problem in the packet. I think that's a good place to start. It says a person whose genotype is AB, so this is one of my parents, uh, marries someone with I, A, little i. So basically heterozygous for type A blood, and this first person has AB blood. Show the Punnett square and predict the uh, offspring's genotypic and phenotypic ratios. So the first little line says what are the genotype or what are the phenotypes of each parent? Any question asking phenotypes about these multiple allele problems, they just want to know the blood type. So again, our blood types would be AB 
and A in this case. Now let's look at the Punnett square. Again, we set it up the same way. Keep the same alleles of the same parent either on the top or the side. So there's my AB parent. Here's my Punnett square box. Here is my A parent. And I'm just going to combine my letters again. So one of the possible offspring could be a homozygous dominant A. Another one could be AB blood. Another one could be A blood, but heterozygous situation. And the other one could be B blood, heterozygous. So again, we want to do genotypic and phenotypic ratios. Same thing that we've been doing this whole entire time. Write down all the different genotypes that you have. Okay, that's one out of four, so that's 25%. Uh, the next one was I big A, I big B, that is also 25%, oops, not 250, 25%. Um, heterozygous A, there's only one of those, 25%, and heterozygous for B, one of those, 25%. All right. For phenotypes, we want to, again, what are their blood types? So if we look at this, these two are both going to have A blood. Those are the only two out of the four. So two out of the four is 50%, or you can just do two out of four or a half. Uh, and then AB blood is going to be 25% chant possibility. And B blood is going to be 25% possibility. Okay, so that is problem one. I am going to skip to the one of the ones where you kind of have to do some investigative work um, as my next example. So I'm going to find one here, and I'll do it on the next slide. I decided I'm going to do number six. Number six says a woman with type AB blood. Okay, so we for sure know her genotype right off the bat. There's only one possibility. AB blood marries a man with type A blood. Now, type A blood, we know it has to be this, but we're not sure of what the other letter is. It doesn't really tell us from what we've read so far. It could be a little I, but it could also be a big I with an A. The next sentence says his mother had type O blood. His mother had type O blood. She had to be little I, little I. Regardless of what this person's dad was, the fact that mom had two little I's, mom has to give one of her letters to the offspring. So that sentence right there tells us that his genotype for the type A blood has to be big I, A, little I. So what blood type is not likely to occur among this couple's children? Show the Punnett square and explain your reasoning. So I'm just going to do the Punnett square. This one I don't even need to do phenotypic and genotypic ratios. It just asks me a question. So I'm going to do all of my possibilities. I always want to make sure I include the capital I's and little I's. Don't take a shortcut and just start writing A's and B's. Um, I won't give you credit on your homework if you do that. All right, so the question said, what blood type is likely to, is not likely to occur among the couple's children? Well, here's an A child, here's a B child, another A child, A, B. What don't we see? Type O, that was a bad T, type O is not possible. Okay. A um, couple of the problems. I know number seven is kind of a baby mix-up um, at the hospital type kind of mystery. Again, start with what you know. Remember, if it is O blood, you for sure know the genotype. If it's A blood, you for sure know the genotype. And you can figure out those problems from there. Okay. I hope this was helpful. Um, you want to complete the multiple allele problems. I believe in the packet there are seven of them total. I already did number one for you and number six for you. So finish those up and be ready to have them um, to show me on Tuesday.